Michael from Pittsburgh. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Hi, Alice from Plano. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Michael. So we're just going to give a few more people some time to log on and we will get started. Um, if you're painting, make sure you've got some water um, and what else? Um, some paper towels. Hi, Mara. Hi, Karen. Glad you can join us. Hey, Karen Shepard, how are you? Glad to see you. Okay, so we'll give it like one more minute and then we'll get started, y'all. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I am reading your comments at the same time that I'm doing all this. Uh, so give me a second. There'll probably be a little bit of a delay if you have questions. Okay, so um, today we are going to make a beautiful lemon painting or drawing, uh, depending on what kind of supplies you have. Um, this was made with watercolors, but... Um, today we also will have some modifications, so if you have markers, um, I'll show you how to do this with markers. If you have colored pencils, I will show you how to do it with colored pencils. Um, and I'll also show you how to do this with crayons. So whatever, um, whatever you have will make it work, okay? Um, the only other thing that you're going to need, regardless of what other, whatever kind of medium you're going to use, you're going to want something that is about an inch and a half in diameter. So I have um, my roll of washi tape. Um, other things like a lid from your kitchen you could use. Um, you don't have to have this, but if you are not comfortable making circles, uh, freehand, then you can use this instead of freehanding a circle. Um, so whatever you want to do. So I will kind of talk for a little bit if you need to go find something this size. Um, I can I can talk. Um, so I will show you that. But um, okay, so before we get started, let's have a little chat about why we're doing this. We are doing this because it is fun. We're not doing it to recreate something that looks exactly like this. 
uh, it's not a competition. <laughs> so, and as a very competitive person myself, like I get it, but I just want you guys to have fun. I don't want you to look at, um, you know, whoever's painting with you today, if you have somebody painting with you, it's, it's not, it's not a competition. I just want you to have a good time. Your work does not necessarily have to look like mine. Um, and it shouldn't because it's your work, right? So I want you to, to create whatever you, whatever you create is wonderful. I just want you to have a good time. So this is what I've been showing as our example for what we're going to create today. But I also want to show you my practice sheet. I've got right over here. Okay, so this is my practice sheet. So you can see I've got um, all different kinds. This one has like a lot of orange in it. This one does not. This one has more green in it. This one's almost entirely yellow. So I did some limes. I did some lime slices. I did some lemon slices. As you can see, this page is totally covered. You can do it that way if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's whatever whatever makes you comfortable creating. So I just, I don't want you to get frustrated or judge yourself. This is just for fun, okay? Um, so we're gonna start with this, but only if you promise to have a nice time. <laughs> I hope that we all have a good time. I want you to enjoy yourself. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I wanted you to see is I made this one in a postcard size. Um, I believe it is four by six. So um, whatever you end up with today, if you wanted to, if you want to make some four by six cards, then um, it would be nice to mail that to somebody who maybe needs some cheering up. Or if you just want to say hi to your friends, since we can't all get out and go see our friends in person right now, um, that might be a nice thing to do. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. This is all gone. If you are going to be doing a watercolor today, then this is watercolor paper that I have right here. Um, it's what I had here too. So you'll see with watercolor paper, it's much heavier than regular paper. Um, and one side is bumpy and one side is smooth. So on this piece of paper, you can feel the difference. So that's the bumpy side. Maybe, yes, and this is the smooth side. So when you're painting, if you have watercolor paper, you wanna paint on the bumpy side, and that is because it will hold the water um, and paint better than um, a regular sheet of paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, that's okay too. Um, that would be a good opportunity for you to put some tape to work. So this is washi tape, and it comes off um, of paper without ripping it. Um, you have to be careful, but um, if you need to, you can tape down the sides of your paper and that will keep it from buckling. Um, if you don't have washi tape, if you happen to have any painter's tape in your house, it'll work the same way. Just be careful when you're pulling it off. Um, scotch tape does not work that well because it tends to actually stick to the paper and not come off. Um, so that's whichever one you have if you feel like you need it. I only use tape um, if I don't have watercolor paper or if I'm going to be putting a lot of paint down on the paper, which means your paper would get more wet um, and then it will kind of buckle. So um, tape down your paper if you need to. If not, we're going to get started. Okay, so here's our little lemon and as you will see, it's about that wide, same size as the roll of tape. So if you want to trace this out, you can, I'm gonna use, um, this is a watercolor pencil. You could use like a regular pencil, a yellow pencil, um, and just make like a real light circle. I don't even know, I don't know if that's gonna be visible to you. Let's see. The advantage of using watercolor pencils, if you have them, is once I start to paint on this, it's gonna disappear, because um, it's paint. Um, okay, so that's going to be my first lemon. Before we get started, these are some of the brushes that I use. Um, this one is pretty standard. This is a size six round, and you'll see it has a nice uh, tip, right? 
nice and pointy so that if I want to do little lines, I can. Um, maybe you do not have that. Maybe you have um, one in your kit that kind of came like this, right? And it's all fluffy. Um, so you want it to have a nice tip. If you have a fluffy brush and you want it to have a nice tip, just get it wet. And just kind of use your fingers to kind of make it come to a point. Okay? Like that. And that'll just make it easier for you. It's really frustrating if you're trying to create and your brush is like this, right? And you want like a nice thin line and your brush is doing this business. Um, so just kind of bring it together with your fingers. Make sense? Hello, Christy. Glad you could join us. Um, okay. So, like I said, first we're going to do watercolors and then we'll do the other mediums. So this is a watercolor set. It is my travel set. But I'm showing it to you because it looks a lot like other watercolor sets that you might have, um, particularly if you have children and you've gotten them the children's sets that have like the round um, wells that have the different paints on them. So the way to use these is you wanna get your paintbrush wet and then kinda of drip water like that. And that's really all it needs is just one little drop. Um, and then that way you can control the amount of paint that you're gonna put on here. I'm gonna set this down. Okay, so here is my circle. And my lemon, lemons are not an exact circle. They sort of have a point at the end. So I'm gonna make like a little rounded pyramid shape. Let's see if you can see that. Let's see. So that'll be the top and another little rounded pyramid shape right here. Okay, good, I think you can see that. If not, I, I can do it again in green. Just let me know if you can't see it. Okay, so either you can follow that or you can just freehand it. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint onto my brush and I'm just gonna outline it. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing yet. So here I am, there's one side, okay? And I'm gonna outline this side. Now, before you go any further, don't paint the whole thing. We wanna leave some space for it to have like a shine coming off of it, and we're gonna do that by leaving a blank space. Do not fill it all in with paint. We're now gonna get this paintbrush wet, and we're just gonna fill it in with water, and the water is going to make the color spread. See, and I'm leaving this spot right here. That's where my shine is. Okay, so the top of your lemon, they tend to have like a little bit of green where the lemon meets the stem. Um, so we're gonna get a little tiny bit of green. Not a lot, we're not gonna heap it on there. You really just need to get your paintbrush kind of wet and I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of green and I'm just gonna touch the top here. And it kind of spreads enough on its own. I might do it again. There we go. There. Okay, so in order for this lemon to look real, it needs to have a bit of a shadow. So we're gonna do that by adding a little bit of orange. So I'm just gonna get my orange just slightly damp there, just a tiny bit, and my shadow is gonna be along this side and around the bottom. And I'm just gonna tap this on here. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, and now I'm rinsing off my brush, and I'm just gonna kinda push this orange so it's down around the edge where I want it. Came up a little far, so I'm pushing it down a little bit. So ta-da! So you just did your first lemon. Um, also, feel free to just kind of watch if you think that's more helpful, and then you can always come back and paint more. Um, so there, so there's your lemon. How did everybody do? You good? Thumbs up if you're good. Um, and feel free to ask any questions. If you guys get confused or you need me to slow down or stop, just tell me. 
Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the slice. So what I want you to notice about this lemon slice is there's a white part here, okay? And um, that's, we're gonna, so we're gonna leave that without paint so that you can see where little segments would be. Um, and then you'll also notice I left some white here in the little segments and that will show um, where the light is hitting it, where it's kind of shiny. Okay. So I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow and if you need to, again, you can trace your half shape if you want to. I'm just gonna freehand it. Okay, so I'm gonna do like a half an oval. Maybe a little bit higher. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter on the bottom. So this is the rind of my lemon. Now I'm gonna do a line almost from tip to tip. I don't know if you can see that. I can barely see it with my eyes. Okay. And then we're gonna do our segments and they're just little triangle wedge shapes. So I'm gonna do a triangle. Remember, I'm gonna leave this white space here. Okay. I'm gonna fill it in, but I'm gonna leave some white for the kind of gleam, right? So it looks shiny. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. I'm leaving the white space there. Make, bringing my little triangle up. Leaving a little bit of white space for the gleam. So I'm leaving white space between the rind and the wedge and between the wedges themselves. Last one. Okay, so now I'm going to get a tiny bit of orange to do the shadow on this rind and I'm just going to touch it a little bit down at the bottom and you'll see this is where the having the point on your brush helps a lot. I'm just using that point just a little bit. I could almost use some more orange, maybe a tiny bit more. Woo! And I'm just using water to kind of spread it a little bit. So you don't want everything to be even and flat with the same amount of paint on it. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose of having watercolor. Um, so you, you want it to be uneven. You want to let the paint kind of do its own thing. You want to let the water kind of push stuff around. Okay, so now we're going to do the lemon in the back. So let's take a look at that. It has more orange in it because it's in the back, so it has a little bit of a shadow. So, the other, what I, the other thing you wanna think about when you're gonna put this one in the back is not to touch it to this lemon. You wanna leave yourself a little bit of space because the paint will um, pool and kinda of go into your other object if it's still wet. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same kind of shape. Here's my little triangle, right? There's my little rounded triangle. And like that, right? It's kind of hiding behind there. Okay, and then I'm gonna rinse off my brush and I'm just gonna use some water to spread it and I'm gonna leave a little bit of white for the gleam. And you can always go back in and fill in the line where the um, where you're trying to not let the paint touch. I'm gonna make that a little bit fatter. There you go. Um, but for right now, while it's all real wet, try to leave yourself some room. Okay. I'm gonna get my little bit of green at the top again for where the stem would touch. Okay, and I'm actually happy with that much. It's not very much. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of orange. And I'm just gonna kinda of drop this orange in here to make it 
a little shadowed. Wow, that's a lot of orange. Okay, I'm rinsing off my brush and I'm just gonna push this orange around. There you go. Okay, everybody doing okay? If you need anything, let me know if you want me to slow down. Okay, so now we're gonna do our leaves. The leaves are gonna be the same sh um, kind of idea. We're gonna do a half of an oval and then a half of an oval. You're just gonna do the outline and then we'll fill it in and you're gonna leave a white space right there for like the vein of the leaf. And as you can see on my practice page, none of these are exactly the same, right? So do not get frustrated if yours is not exactly the same as mine. It's not supposed to be, because it's just for fun, right? Okay, so let's try that. So I'm gonna get a little bit of green. And again, I'm not gonna touch my lemon um, yet because then the green is going to get all over the yellow of your lemon. So I'm going to do half an oval, half an oval. It's almost like a raindrop shape, like a teardrop, right? And then I'm just going to kind of fill it in, but I'm going to leave that vein in the middle. There's a leaf for that one. I'm gonna do like a big one right here. Let's see. Right? Maybe a little bit fatter. Okay, I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm just filling it in with water. Hooray! Okay, a few more. Oh, okay, so another thing you can do if you feel like all of these are turning out way too much the same color green and you want a little variety is grab a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna grab just like a tiny bit right here. And I'm just gonna drop this in while it's wet and you can see how it makes a more bluish green on your leaf. You can try that. Okay. So now we just need to add some stems. So I'm gonna get the brown just a little wet and I'm gonna use the tip of the brush. Now, if you wanna do a really thin stem, you wanna hold your paintbrush like this, straight up and down um, and just move it quickly. If you go real slow, that paint's gonna spread out and turn into a real fat line, which is fine if that's what you want. Um, I'm gonna do this one real thin and I'm gonna try not to rest my hand. It's kind of hard for me not to. Okay, so there's my first stem. And then I'm gonna have it kinda imply that it's connecting down here, right? Like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some more leaves. Do not get frustrated if your line is bigger than you wanted it to be. You can see how these kind of bleed and got a little bit fatter. I don't care. I'm just gonna, here. There, now that one's a little bit fatter. And now it all matches. So don't get frustrated. I'm just gonna do another leaf coming off of here. So it's that same teardrop shape. And I'll leave the vein in the middle. You're good. So there's that. Um, if you want it to be all finished, you could totally be finished. I'm gonna sign here. I'm just gonna put my signature right there. And you should definitely put your signature in and be proud of what you made. Okay, so that's how to do that with watercolor. So let's talk about if you don't have watercolors. 
um, and you want to use a colored pencil instead. So I'll just use the back of this. Let me move my paints. Okay, so this is going to be the same idea. So let me make sure you can see that. In front like that. Okay. So get your whatever that is one and a half inches. Mine is my washi tape. Um, also, if you don't have something that's one and a half inches, it doesn't matter. Like that's just, that's the size I used because it matches that. Just do whatever you've got laying around. If you want to freehand it, that's fine too. Um, so again, just get a circle. Okay. And then I'm going to do my slightly curved pyramids for the edges. Right? And then you're just going to fill it in. And remember to leave yourself some white space for where the light would be hitting it. So I'm just going to decide that's right there. And the nice thing about colored pencils is you can push harder if you want it to be darker. Or you can just kind of go back and fill it in more. I'm going to do that so that it has like a shadow. Right? And then you can do the same thing we did with paint. So I'm going to get the green and I'm just going to add a little bit of green here at the top. Okay, I'm going to get an orange pencil and I'm just going to add in a little bit of shading on the edge there, the shadow, right? And I don't have to worry about colors bleeding so I can just go ahead and put in a stem, right? I have two different colors of green pencils and I'm just going to use them both to give my painting some variety. My drawing, I guess, in this, in this case. So there's my teardrop shape, right? It's just half an oval. If you need to, you can use this to do your curve, right? And then just that side, other curve, okay? And then you want to kind of fill it in and leave yourself that line in the middle. Not that fat. This one is way too fat. Let me finish. Okay, and then if I use another color of green. Ta -da. Okay, so do you remember I told you with watercolor pencils how you can kind of make them turn into watercolor? We can do that. Oh, let me do a little slice here. Also, if you wanted to make them limes, just use green. Same principle. You'd still add like a little more green at the top and a little bit of orange at the bottom. So there's my line, right? It's my half circle shape and my line. And now I'm going to do the wedges. I'm going to leave space again right there for like the rind and then, or what is that? The pith, the pith, I think. And I'm gonna leave some space in between each of the fruit segments and a little bit of space on there to show where it would be gleaming in the light. Okay. And I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter at the bottom. All right, and then I'm gonna use my orange color to make a little bit of a shadow right there. Okay, so these are watercolor pencils. So watch what's gonna happen when I get it wet. Right? It starts to blend together so it actually looks like watercolor paint. Pretty cool. Ta -da. 
Um, and we can fill in these leaves right here too. Look at that. And it almost like it changes the color as well. Um, and these colors will stay on your brush and blend. So you'll see how that has a little bit of yellow in it because um, I touched it after touching the lemon. Okay. I'm gonna blend this one. Ta-da. Okay, so same theory with, oops, hold on you guys. Technical difficulties. Okay. Um, same theory, if you have markers, you will just use that as a guide if you need it. Oh, that's the tiny side. I'm going to use the fat side. All right. And then there's my line across the top. And then I'm going to do a little triangle shape. I'm going to leave some white space for the wedge of the pith, which is apparently what it's called. Just gonna keep doing triangle shapes. Right? Okay. What else? Um, crayons. Okay, so if we want to do Crayons. It's the same same thought, and actually, I sort of like doing crayon drawings because you can really blend the colors. Okay, so there's my circle for my lime, and then I'm just going to add my little rounded pyramid shape, right? And then you can just fill it in. You'll notice when I'm drawing that I'm kind of making curves, the curvy shape. Whenever you're drawing or painting, you want to go along with the shape of the object you are creating. So, for example, if I went like that, it would make my line look really flat, right? So I'm making these curved lines, and that sort of implies the shape of the object. Okay, so there's a little bit of green there. And if I wanted to make the stem, or not the stem, sorry, the bottom, there's a little bit of orange there, right? And okay, so it would be touching at the top. So that's like a lighter color, maybe? See if we like that. How about put a darker color at the top? Maybe. I don't know. Play with it. Okay. And then a stem. Right? And then I can add leaves if I want to. Same shape. Teardrop shape. Okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna want to see what you've done. You can email it to me. Get a marker here. You can send it to me. We're gonna be doing this every Monday. Every Monday at noon, we will have a new art project. And I would love for you to share what you have done. Um, and hold on, I can't talk and write at the same time. Okay. All right, so apagon at plano.gov is my email address, and I would love for you to send me what you have made. Um, let's see, tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday. So Tuesday and Wednesday, we do an artist spotlight. Um, Thursday, what are we doing on Thursday? Um, oh, my mind is going blank. Friday is live music. Thursday. Thursday is the student um, virtual art exhibit. So if you are a student or if you have a child who's a student, um, please send me their work. Um, one, one photograph and their first name and their school um, and their grade. And that will go up on our student virtual art exhibit every Thursday. 
Um, and yeah, and on Friday we will have live music. And all of this is at noon, so just come to um, at Plano Arts on Facebook at noon. Let me show you what we're doing next week. So next week we're going to make some little cactus. These are prickly pear cactus right here. Um, so yeah, so um, I would love to see what you've done. Please, please, please email it to me at apagan, A-P-A-G-A-N, at plano.gov. Um, show me what you've made. Let's see, I'm double checking my notes to make sure I've not forgotten anything. Okay, yeah, so Thursday, definitely send me, um, so between now and Thursday, send me your student artwork with uh, one photo and your student's first name and their grade and their school. Um, so they can be in our virtual student or student virtual art exhibit. Um, and then Friday live music, Tuesday and Wednesday artist spotlights. Um, if you had fun, please, um, oh, you want to see the practice sheet? Sure thing, Joan. Hold on. Um, if you have questions, put them in the comments. Okay, so Joan, there's that. So you can see I also did limes and there's little wedge shapes and you can see where I added the orange, how it kind of changed the color there, which is cool like that. So you've got color variety, you've got one color here, you've got kind of an orangey here, this is much lighter um, and it's really cool. Okay, you're welcome. Um, okay, so again, um, this is postcard size, so if you want to send it to somebody, that'd be really nice. Um, this video is going to be on our page, um, so you will be able to go backwards and rewind and see what you missed if you need to, or just refer to it later. Um, it'll take a few minutes after we're finished up, and then I will. Uh, it'll get posted. Um, so, and then last week, like I said, we made blue bonnets, so if you want to go back um, onto our Facebook page which you're at right now, so you shouldn't have a problem finding it, but just if you need to remember it, it's, um, wow, I can't do an at symbol right now, at Plano Arts. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and so our videos will be there. Um, so again, so we made this today. If you liked this video, please hit like, uh, please share, and um, yeah. We'll see you again to make more art, this one specifically next Monday. Thanks for tuning in, you guys, um, and I'll see you later.